Hey, this is Jim Bergman for Imperial Tool. Today we're going to go over the Imperial Thermal 14571 and 4501 thermal evacuation gauges. I'm going to walk you through sort of step by step how to configure the gauge, how to set up the sensor, and how to get it properly calibrated. We're going to put it on a vacuum pump and I'm going to show you how to make sure that it, the vacuum pump's working properly. Then we're going to go over a little bit on how to test the gauge and how to make sure it's working properly so you get a perfect evacuation every time. The Imperial Thermal Vacuum Gauge comes in two models, the 14571 and the 4501. The primary difference between two models is one is battery only and one is dual powered. And this one here happens to be a dual powered unit. We're going to go over the dual powered unit because it really covers both gauges and I'll show you a little bit about some of the key features of it and how they're all used. The gauge incorporates a uh, analog scale. An analog scale provides us a lot of good information about the characteristics of the vacuum and I'll show you that in a few minutes. The top part of the scale is in microns and it goes from atmospheric pressure down to 10 microns. The bottom part of the scale is used for the calibration of the sensor and I'll show you how to do that uh, a little further along in the video. There's a calibration adjustment pot here to adjust the uh, calibration for the unit. We have a calibrate read switch and then we have a battery off AC switch or in the case of a 4501, it'll just be battery off switch. Uh, the 14571 has a place for batteries and it also has a plug for AC and it can operate off either one. All of the thermistor vacuum gauges come with a 4510 vacuum sensor. On the sensor is stamped the calibration point. This one in this case is 31.25. And that calibration point is going to be what we're going to set on a calibration scale when we configure the instrument. One of the most important things to remember about the 4510 sensor is that the sensor is keyed. There's a small key here and there's a key slot that's in the plug. We need to make sure that we always line up the key so that the sensor is positioned properly so the meter will read properly. If you don't position the key properly, what will happen is the meter will give you an erroneous reading that will uh, either take it all the way to, towards zero or it won't read at all. So to line those two up, you simply line it up, slide it in, and then we squeeze this in and pull it in until the plug is fully seated. Now that we have the 4510 sensor completely seated, I want to go over a couple things that are very important about thermistor vacuum gauges. The sensor uh, should always be covered. In this case, I installed a brass cap. They do come with an orange uh, dust cover that you can put on there, but the idea is that we keep the sensor free of oil, dirt, or other contaminants that could affect your vacuum reading. Also, when you connect the sensor onto the system, I cannot stress the importance of using a non-gas permeable coupling like this one uh, to make sure that the sensor always reads accurately. Again, we're, when we're attaching and we're very close to the sensor, any gas leakage through a hose or through a fitting is going to be indicated very quickly by the sensor and it will make us think that we're not getting an adequate vacuum when in fact what we do is we have a leak right at the sensor itself. Before we begin evacuating a system, we want to make sure that our vacuum gauge is calibrated and working properly and our vacuum pump is capable of pulling a vacuum typically below 50 microns. At minimum 100 microns uh, will work for evacuating a system because ultimately we want to get our vacuum down to 500 microns or less. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and connect my sensor directly up to my vacuum pump and a couple of quick notes here. We always want to make sure that the sensor is in an upwards position. In other words, I don't want the sensor mounted down like this. Like when the pump shuts off, it, the vacuum can draw oil out of the pump and into the sensor. and We don't want to contaminate our sensor, so I want to keep that sensor mounted in a vertical position at all times, and that includes when we hook it up to the system. The next step in using the thermistor vacuum gauge is that we have to calibrate the sensor. So right now I have everything in the off position. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through your calibration. This is a dual power gauge, so we can either select AC or battery. In this case, I'm going to select AC. It's always better to use an AC power source when available because it will provide us with a more consistent source of power and we will not have to go back as frequently and check the calibration of the sensor as the batteries start to wear just from use. So right now I'm going to set this to AC. I'm going to go ahead and change this from read to calibrate. And you can see when I go to the calibration that my needle jumps up. I'm going to set that at exactly 31.25, which is already set pretty close there and I'm going to let that set for a minute to make sure there's no drift 
After I make sure there's no drift, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back to read. And now I'm ready to take a vacuum measurement. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and calibrated the thermistor micron gauge, I want to check the ultimate pull down of my pump. So what I'm going to do is make sure that it goes down to 50 microns or less. Now a couple of important things you want to do when you're setting your pump up. One is, always start with a gas ballast open. This will allow oil to enter the front of the vein so we make sure we get proper, proper lubrication in the pump. After we get the pump started up, I'm going to go ahead and shut the gas ballast because until I get the gas ballast shut, I will not operate in the second stage of the pump and get the pump to completely pull down. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up, get it running here, and I'm going to shut my gas ballast and we'll take a look at what our pull down is. You can see the gauge is responding very quickly. We're down below 100. We'll let that run a few more minutes. Make sure we drop down below 50 microns. Okay, from our analog scale, we can see we're somewhere uh, right around 12 to 15 microns and the pump is very adequate for dehydrating and degassing a system. Okay, so now that we made sure our gauge is calibrated and our pump works, I cannot stress enough the importance of how critical it is to have good connections to our vacuum pump and our vacuum gauge to make sure that we don't have leaks and that we can adequately determine the ultimate vacuum that we achieve on our system. In this case here, I have a recovery tank and we're just gonna show you a little bit, real quick, how to do a, a pull down on a recovery tank uh, just because it's a convenient system that we have right here. Now, one of the first things I want to make sure you understand is you should always connect your vacuum gauge to a high quality vacuum rated core tool. If you're going to get an accurate evaluation of your vacuum, you need to make sure that you can isolate the hoses from the system. All hoses leak, all hoses are gas permeable, so we want to make sure that we have the vacuum gauge connected with a brass coupler and that the gauge is connected directly to a core tool and we use the side port on the core tool so when we close the core tool off, like in this case here, that is completely isolated from the rest of the system. So now that we've tested our vacuum sensor and we have the, we have the vacuum sensor calibrated and we've tested the pump ultimate pull down, the next thing we want to do if we can is we want to test the uh, pull down of our vacuum rig. So what I'm going to do here, I have these two valves in the tank shut so the only thing I'm pulling against is my vacuum sensor, my core tool, and my hose. And when I start up the vacuum pump, what I again want to see is that I can pull down below 100 microns. This makes sure that I, that I don't have any connections on my hoses, my core tool, or my vacuum sensor that are leaking. So now we're going to turn on the pump and we're going to make sure that the vacuum level goes below 100 microns. So as you can see before, where we were able to pull down below 25 microns, now we can pull just above that between 50 and 25. So our vacuum rig is tight and we'll easily be able to get this tank down below the 500 micron level that we want to try and achieve. Okay, as you can see here, this is probably a much larger hose than you're used to seeing uh, typical evacuation performed with, and that's because this is a three quarter inch hose. A three quarter inch hose is up to 16 times faster than a typical quarter inch hose that are used for evacuation. Again, you can see I'm attached to a core tool. I have my sensor mounted up high so that oil from the system cannot drain into the sensor and contaminate and damage the sensor. This is the way that you always want to hook it up no matter if you're hooked to an air conditioner, a recovery tank, or any other system that you might be evacuating. So now we've got everything hooked up. I'm just going to do a little demonstration of evacuation. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pump. We're going to watch the vacuum gauge for a few minutes. We're going to isolate the vacuum with a core tool. We're going to take a look at the decay and then determine if the vacuum is deep enough to use the tank for service. Now, what I'm going to do, again, I want to make sure that my gas ballast is all the way open. So my gas ballast is open over here. I can feel the screw is loose. I'm going to go ahead and bump the pump off. The pump will start. I'm going to go ahead and shut my gas ballast down. And then we'll watch our vacuum gauge and the characteristics of the vacuum as it comes down. Once we get it down to the required vacuum level, I'm going to go ahead and shut my core tool off and isolate my uh, hoses from my vacuum so that I can actually see the actual vacuum and then watch the decay. 
Okay, so now that the vacuum pump's run for a few minutes, you can see that we have the vacuum down to about 75 microns. But what I want to do next is I want to shut my core tool, which I'm going to shut right now, and we're going to watch our rate of decay. What we want to make sure of is that the vacuum level does not rise above our level that we try to attain, and typically that's 500 microns. So I'm going to watch this over a period of time, and typically we'll wait about 10 minutes, and really it does depend on the size of the system. A larger system, we're going to wait longer. We may even wait several hours to see what our decay is on a uh, large centrifugal chiller. Uh, on a residential system, typically about 10 minutes is adequate, and with this tank, uh, about 5 to 10 minutes is adequate to make sure that our tank is holding a vacuum at the level we want to achieve. And again, that's right now about 500 microns or less. So we had the vacuum pump off for 10 minutes, and you can see, uh, again, we have it isolated from the hoses with the core tool, that our decay has only been about 5 microns. We're sitting right at 100 microns right now, so the system's exactly where we want to see it. Okay, so hopefully now you have a little bit better insight into the operation of the 14571 and the 4501 thermal vacuum gauges by Imperial Thermal. There are a ton of good references out there on vacuum, but this is probably the best review of a vacuum for service engineers. I'd highly recommend you get a copy of this and read it. It'll really explain principles of vacuum and it'll let give you a good understanding of why you want to use uh, large diameter hoses and why you want to make sure your vacuum pump is sized properly for the application and also give you some information about how vacuum gauges work and a little history on vacuum and, and how we measure it. Um, the 4501 and the 14571 will give you years of troubles free service with some simple maintenance. The most important thing are keep your sensors clean, keep a spare sensor on hand and don't lose faith in the unit because most of the time our problems are in our connections not in the product itself. This is Jim Bergman for Imperial Tool. Thanks a lot for watching.